Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our theme this Lenten season has been You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And so often, evil is louder than good. I mean, there's a reason the media has a saying that if it bleeds, it leads. I mean, that is, if you have a story that is sensational or even bloody, you make it the main story because it catches people's attentions. Evil often is louder than good. Or another example is criticism. Negative comments, they tend to be more powerful, louder to us than compliments or positive comments. I mean, what sticks with us longer is the complaint, the criticism, the insult. We keep hearing those things long after the kindness or the affirmation has faded because evil is so often louder than good. And it's true in the reading from this eve today in Luke 23. It starts with those rulers, the members of the Sanhedrin. Luke says that they scoffed, or you could also translate it, they kept on continually scoffing. Because when evil speaks, it is loud and it is long. Without realizing it, they, they say true things about Jesus hanging on the cross. They say Jesus is God's Messiah, His Christ. Jesus is God's chosen one. But what they miss is that he's not there to save himself. He's there to die for all people. The rulers don't see this and they can't see it. And all they can do is scoff and ridicule and evil is loud. And then there are the soldiers, the troops that are directly under Roman control. They are the executioners. They actually killed Jesus and the two criminals. And they know the charge that Pilate has settled on, the charge against this perfectly innocent man, the king of the Jews. There it is on a sign above Jesus, a piece of wood. But that's not enough. In their blindness, the soldiers mock Jesus. Hey, don't kings look after themselves? If you're the king of the Jews, look, you have a sign above you. If you're the king, save yourself. Again, laughter, mockery, insults, loud, evil words. And then there's more. One of the dying criminals actually finds it within himself to rail at Jesus, to blaspheme him. And once he starts, he keeps on doing it. Aren't you the Christ? Aren't you? Do something. And I wonder how the rulers and the soldiers reacted when one of the men who was dying beside Jesus joined in the noise and the mockery. I mean, they had already taken his clothes. The Lord has no dignity left at all. And now this criminal's voice adds to the mix. Again, it's loud, it's long, and it's all evil. But then there is one voice. A solitary voice that speaks not out of blindness or ignorance or hatred or mockery. It's a voice that speaks honesty and truth and hope. It's a voice that we're going to listen carefully to today, to this believing criminal. And what he said in faith, even with all the noise around him, because Jesus answers him. Jesus hasn't replied to any of the noise around him, the loud evil around him, but he speaks to this man. This believer first speaks to his fellow criminal. Now, we don't know what these two have done, we, whether they've committed a crime together or whether they were just lined up together to die. But his voice of faith is astonishingly honest about himself and his fellow criminal. He says, don't you fear God? And the unbelief all around him is ignorant. They don't even know what something far more is going on here before their eyes, something mysterious, that God's justice is at work and something more. And he calls them out. He says, don't you fear God? And then he goes on. He says, look, you and I are dying here because we deserve what we are getting. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
And in a way, these words don't quite prove that this man is a believer. But he does know that something is going on. And the question is, is how does he know about this Jesus? I mean, he's right. He's absolutely right. Here's been, he's been hearing the evil voices all around him all of this time. And the things that he's saying that are actually true. Jesus is the Christ. He is the king of the Jews. He is king over everyone. Jesus has done nothing wrong. And yet he is dying on a cross. Can he really be the king? But it's the believing criminal's next words that show the depth of his faith. And there are words that are so similar to words that Luke has brought to our attention throughout his gospel from the most unlikely of people. And it starts back when chapter 7, with the, uh, when we see the centurion, his beloved servant is sick unto death, and the synagogue elders in Capernaum plead with Jesus to help the man. They say, hey, he is worthy for your help. He's worthy. Help him, Jesus. But before Jesus gets to this man's house, the soldier said word, and his face shines. He says, no, I am not worthy, not worthy for you to enter into my home. But I know who you are, and I know what sort of authority you have and how it works. Don't come into my house. I'm not worthy for you to enter it. But just stop where you are and speak, and I know my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled in this moment. The Son of God is amazed. He'd never seen faith like this in any of the sons of Abraham, only from this Gentile. I mean, this is just one. There are many examples. Luke goes on to tell us about the sinful woman who knows Jesus and his mercy, and she loves him and anoints his feet and wipes them with her hair. And then there's the bleeding woman who believes that all she has to do is touch Jesus' clothes. There's the short, rich tax collector that everyone hates for one reason or another. But when Jesus comes to his house, transformation happens. And Jesus says there to Zacchaeus, Today is an unexpected day. None of you saw it coming, but today salvation came to this house, to this unlikely believer, Zacchaeus. Today, Luke shows us characters throughout his gospel, and so back on the cross we see yet another one, another unlikely believer that speaks such great faith. I mean, does this criminal really know who Jesus is? Does he believe that Jesus dying on the cross can still be the king? Yes, he does. He speaks the truth and he speaks in hope. He says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He knows the truth. He knows that Jesus is the king, a king surrounded by evil, with evil destroying him, and that truth gives him hope. If Jesus is that king, this will not be the end of Jesus. If he is God's true king, no evil can stop God's plan through this chosen one. If Jesus is the king, then the day will come when evil is undone and injustice is overthrown and the world is put right again. The day must come when Jesus comes into all the glory of his kingdom. So while he himself is dying, this this believing criminal looks for that day. He looks to that day when he knows this king must come again, and so he says, remember me, Jesus. Remember me on that day. I deserve everything that I am getting, but you can save me. That's the truth. And he says, remember me, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. He looks to that day, and that is hope. Now, just hours before in the upper room, Jesus made a promise to his apostles who were about to betray him and run away. He promised to restore them after he was raised from the dead. You could say that Jesus promised that he would remember them. 
And that Jesus' promise will come true because after sin and evil have done their worst to Jesus, Jesus rises in victory. And somehow, the believing criminal has come to know this. God has revealed it there at the end of his life. The believing criminal knows the truth about Jesus and that his hope is set on the day of King Jesus' final victory. And all he says is this, Jesus, remember me on that day. I don't know when, I don't know how, but remember me on that day. And Jesus will. This believing criminal speaks with honesty and truth and hope. He knows what he deserved, but he believed who Jesus is, and he looks forward to the day when Jesus will come into his kingdom. Honesty, truth, and hope. But there's more because, remember, Jesus answers him. And just like with Zacchaeus, Jesus has left a gift before anyone expected it. When he said, today salvation has come to this house. Or just like at Christmas in Bethlehem before the shepherds expected it, it said, today there has been born for you in the city of David a Savior. So for the criminal who trusted that the king and the true king would remember him on the great day, King Jesus has a gift already there in that moment today. This truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise, the place of rest and safety and the presence of the living God. Paradise, a reality that only this king could create and bring about. And there he proclaims that today you will be with me in the presence of my Father in paradise. And today, Luke encourages you to listen to this voice of faith when evil is all around you, when it is so much louder than everything else, and even when your own evil wants to rise up and deafen you. There are lots of mockers and scoffers, and their voices can seem so loud. There's plenty of evil, and it can feel like the noise will crush us. But when we have seen the strange and unexpected salvation of our God, we cannot help but be encouraged. The evil came against Jesus and it did crush him, but victory came when death was undone. Victory came when the king rose from the dead. So you and I, we are still waiting waiting with the church on earth, waiting with the church at rest, still waiting for that day when Jesus comes into his kingdom with all his glory. But as you wait, let your voice speak honesty. You know, we are getting what we deserve, this believing criminal said. And so we also say, That we would deserve nothing but wrath and death if we were left to our own goodness, our own strength. If God left us alone with ourselves, we would deserve the same. I mean, that's honest. But let your voice also speak truth. The truth about Jesus, the true King. That on that afternoon long ago, He was the King who gave up all of His royal privilege and power. He emptied Himself and became obedient to God's plan to save the world. But He was still the King. And that's why the dark day did not last. That's why our Lord rested in the tomb only for a time. And that's why there was a today that no one expected on Easter morning. That's truth. And as you speak honesty and truth, let there be hope. Unshakable hope built on the king. This king has a great memory and no one who calls upon him will be put to shame. Yes, it's Lent again and that means the final Easter has not dawned. There is evil still all around us and within us, but hope is built on a king that does not listen to the clamor of evil. 
We hear the voice of faith long ago and we speak as that believer on the cross spoke. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And your king will come. And he has a great memory. He has claimed you and he will remember you on that day. In the name of Jesus, amen.